Alright guys, so today I've got another Fusion 360 tutorial. I'm waiting on some stuff to arrive for the project, so I thought it'd be a good chance to just do another tutorial as I haven't done one in quite a while. So what I'm going to do is show you how you can do countersunk holes in Fusion 360 for when you want to use countersunk screws. So what I've got here is a flathead screw that I've imported from McMaster Car. And there's a McMaster car feature built into Fusion 360 and I've actually made a tutorial on how you can use that. So I'll leave a card above if you want to check it out. For those of you that don't know, a flathead screw basically allows you to screw into something and have the head of the screw flush with whatever the surface is that you're screwing into. But in order for that to work, you also need the countersunk hole on whatever surface you're screwing into. And what I'm gonna to do today is show you how you can create that hole using the simple extrusion feature in Fusion 360. So when you're picking these parts, there's a few things that you wanna keep in mind. When you actually select the part to import, it'll give you all the dimensions and the mechanical drawings and things. Um, so I've written a few of them down to save some time in the video. But what things you wanna look out for, if I just show you here, the main one really is obviously the depth of the screw head, but be careful not to overlook it. Don't measure from between these two points because remember there's also this part here that isn't tapered. It comes straight down. And if you were to taper from this top corner down to here, that angle would be wrong. So make sure that you have those correct height measurements so that you can get this correct. It's never gonna be perfect, especially if you're doing it by eye. But most of the time, if you've got the dimensions and the drawings, it will be good. So just for this tutorial, I'm gonna create a simple box. So I'm gonna go up to sketch and I'm going to sketch out just a square. I'm going to make it 10 mil by 10 mil. And we're going to extrude that up by 4 mil. Now, as I said, I wrote down a few of the dimensions. So I'm just going to go straight ahead and sketch these on. So the screw uh, diameter I had as 1.5 mil. The screw head, uh, I'm going to put that down as 2.95. And as good practice, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this reference to the center point. And you should always be doing this. And if you're a beginner and you're interested in learning how to design properly and with good practice in Fusion 360, please go check out my Fusion 360 for beginners course. I'll leave a link in the description below. So now that I've added those references, you can see all the blue lines have gone away. Fusion's happy. It's good to go. So what we can do now is extrude these. So obviously the main screw hole, we want to extrude all the way through. So I'm going to set the extent to object and just click on the bottom surface, that one, and hit OK. Now remember here, you might be tempted to extrude this part of the sketch at that full depth. We don't want to do that. What you want to do is measure out first that top part here that we talked about, so this part, measure that out. Then you want to extrude that down to the correct measurement. In this case, I had it as 0.13 mil, roughly. And we wanna be negative on that. So you can see it sits there. And now what we wanna do is again, extrude. We wanna select these parts, but we wanna start from object. And the object we're gonna start from is not the top surface. It's gonna be the one underneath that we measured from before. So we're gonna do that. And then we wanna extrude that down by the, the remaining depth of the screw head, which in this case I had as 0.89 minus 0.13 mil. And remember you wanna subtract because we're extruding down. And you can see now that's extruded inwards. And if we just hit okay for a second and we hide the sketch, you can see that that's extruded right the way down and it's gone down flat. And this is not a countersunk hole, that's not what we want because the screw wouldn't sit in there properly. Uh, so what we can do is come back to our timeline where we just made that extrude. We wanna right click, edit feature. And notice there's a setting on here called taper angle. Now what this does is it tapers up from the bottom. So if we set a minus five taper angle, notice what's happening here on the model. So if I change this to 15, you can see the bottom is sort of coming in like this at an angle. And that's what we want for this countersunk screw. Now, again, if you've got the mechanical drawings, you'll have these angle values, but I'm just gonna eyeball it for the tutorial. Um, so if I set this to 25, you can see it's bringing it in slowly, and I'm just gonna do it as best as I can. That's a bit much, probably 35.5. There we go, perfect. So now, 
you can see we've got that gap on there that I was talking about at the top, that ridge, and then the taper starts. So just to show you an example of this demonstration, what I'll do is I'll create a component from this body. So I can right click the body, create component. I'm going to ground that component. I'm just going to call it box. I'm going to ground this as the main component. And now I'm going to click joint and I want to join the surface of this screw to be flush with the surface of this object. So if I join those, you can see it's flipped it. Um, but if you notice on the menu here on the right, there's a little flip button. We want to click that and it just flips it over for us. And you can see here I've been quite generous with the gap around the edge. Um, you can change that however you want. Just remember that if you're doing this for 3D printing, there are tolerances with 3D printing and you need to leave a little bit of play when it comes to this kind of stuff. If you're machining, then you can be a lot more precise. But now if we take a look at this and we angle around it, you can see what I'm talking about. So that is now sitting flush with the surface and stuff like this is really handy, you know, for 3D printing projects where you need, you know, you've got limited space or you just want it to look really presentable. This is the way to go. One other really useful thing I want to show you that can help check to see if this is going to work is something called a split sketch. So what we can do is we can create an offset plane from this edge and I'm going to drag this backwards until it's roughly in the center of the screw. That'll do. And now what you can do is create a sketch and sketch on there. I'm going to finish the sketch for now, but what this is useful for is say for example, you've got a model and you want to sketch on something, but there's another part of the model in the way. Well, what you can do is you can use a split sketch tool to hide that part of the model while you continue with your sketch. And you'll see what I mean. So if I go up to sketch three now, right click and slice sketch, you can see it sliced it at the point that we're sketching. And you could now go, go on here and continue your sketch. But it's a great way to see if what you've done is gonna work. And if we take a look at this, it looks like I've made a little error here, which is great. It works out well for the tutorial. I can show you how to correct that. But you can see what I was talking about. If you don't get the angle correct, the screw is not going to sit properly. It'll still go in, but it won't sit snug. So it looks like what I've done here is I've um, subtracted the distance, this measurement, instead of plus it. So if we go back to our extrusion here, edit feature, you can see here what I've done is I took the full extrusion and I added to it. So what I want to do is subtract. Remember, I'm also going to have to correct the taper angle. So if I go to 37, we probably go a bit more. Let's try 40, 43, there we go, 43 looks okay. So I'm gonna hit okay. And now if I go to the front, you can see it sits a lot better. Because I was more generous with the spacing, you can see it's not a perfect taper. These, you know, are compromises you put in when you're designing something like this. I think the important thing to learn here is to make use of your mechanical drawings. They are reliable and that's what they're there for. Just remember that if you're 3D printing, you will have to, you know, allow for some tolerances, uh, especially if you want a nice snug fit. But hopefully you get the idea and you can now see how you would go about doing something like this in Fusion 360. And maybe you can integrate it into a few of your projects as well. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.